Welcome on into the Kiwi Football Fix. Nice to have your company. We've got a massive show, as we always do, shining a spotlight on all things New Zealand football. A little bit later, we'll talk ISPS Honda Women's Premiership final action. It's this Sunday. Canterbury United Pride gunning for their third straight title against Capital Football. We'll talk about that with Gemma Lewis. We'll also hear from not one, not two, but three Kiwi girls who have been snapped up by the W League. But before we do that... Let's go inside the Wellington Phoenix camp with James McGarry. Where are you uh, joining us from? Yeah, well, at the moment I'm just at the at the CAF at the uh, uni building we we train at. Just uh, it's about I think it's about nine o'clock here in the morning, so we've got a few hours until training. So I'm just just re just relaxing, having a coffee, and and uh, then getting ready ready to go. How's life over there? That's oh, good. Yeah, we've obviously been here for you know six seven weeks now. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. I think the the team settled in and really well and you know reasonably difficult situation um but yeah you know the facilities we've got here actually yeah really good um Wollongong as a as a, as a town is, is is nice really nice um not too dissimilar from from home back in you know Wellington um so yeah now the boys are settling in well and and enjoying it and, and how does Australia's COVID response compare to New Zealand's? Is it about the same? Like, do you notice that you know people are wearing masks or you're restricted in going in certain places? What's it like? Yeah, look, I think it's pretty similar to be honest. Um, yeah, it's actually it's actually reasonably hard to tell from from the moment we got here. Um, obviously, they've they've done a, a really good job as well as as you know cutting it out. Um, you know, you still see on the on the buses and public transport, and you know some people walking around wearing masks and. And good on them. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's yeah, pretty similar to, to back home in New Zealand. Now you're back in the Wellington Phoenix environment. It's your second stint with the club. Uh, when, when you left, uh, you know what what kind of human, what kind of player were you to what you are now? Um, I'd say I was just I was I was obviously younger, um, less experienced than I am now. Um, you know, like I signed up the Phoenix when I was when I was only 17. Uh, I was there for three years. Didn't, didn't didn't play the games that I needed to, and that I wanted to to get the experience. Um, so yeah, I, at that time I decided it was it was the right move to try and pursue something in, in Europe. Um, and obviously, yeah, I spent two years over there. It's not a long time, but I think the the experience I gained just from that two years was massive, and and has definitely pushed me a lot further than, than I was. Um, you know, I'm I'm super confident in in the way I play, uh, my ability as as well. Um, I've definitely definitely improved a lot. So I think, yeah, I just come back with a lot more experience and, and you know, I think this, this season's massive for us and, and I'm just super keen to be a huge part of um, the success that, yeah, we want to have. Yeah, you mentioned your time away over in the Netherlands. Uh, you know, how, how different were things over there in terms of the quality of the league, the way that they train? Um, I'd say, yeah, not not super dissimilar. Um, I think the only difference is, is just the player pool. Um, you know, Europe's a, a, a big, a big place. So um, there's just an abundance of, of players, and especially young, young players. Um, so I think that's where you know it is difficult, especially for us Kiwis, because you know it's it's a, New Zealand's not a, not a massive place, not not that many footballers. Um, so yeah, it was it was difficult going in there and having you know competition in the you know in the hundreds rather than just you know thirty or forty back here in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, look, I enjoyed my time over there. I, I gained a lot. Um, I didn't play, you know, I didn't play the games I wanted to. But going over there, it was always going to be going to be difficult. I, I went over as a reserve player. I didn't go over to be a starting player, and the, the whole point of it was just to push for a spot. Um, but yeah, it was difficult, uh, and I didn't get that. Um, and then obviously earlier this year, um, you know, when the opportunity was potentially there to come to come back to the Phoenix, I yeah, I knew I needed to take it and and uh, and, and yeah, get the game experience. I I need. What was it like for you being all that distance away from home, away from your support network and, and at a different time zone? It's not like, you know, when things go wrong at training or in a game, you just sort of catch up with your mates in a local Wellington cafe. Uh, you've got to wait for the yeah. time zone to become appropriate <laughs> to get on the Zoom call. Yeah, did you battle with that a little bit? Um, yes and no. Look, you know, obviously I was, yeah, I was 20 when I moved over there. Um, I think what helped me a lot was the fact that you know when I was younger, I think I was I was 12 or 13. I actually left home to to go and you know pursue football at an academy in, in Christchurch. Um, so I think you know me doing that has made it a lot easier for me to to move overseas and do the things that I do and, and not 
um, yeah, and not let it affect me too much. Obviously, I think it's difficult for for anyone, any player, um, coaching and staff to, to leave their family and and friends. Um, but unfortunately, well, that's just that's just part of the job, unfortunately, and, and you kind of have to have to move on and um, and just do the best you can. Was it made all the more easier knowing that you had Michael Wood, the big keeper, alongside you? Yeah, it did. To be fair, yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, early on, it, it was just going to be me at the club, and then a few weeks after I arrived, yeah. Um, I heard that he was he was coming over and and yeah no I was stoked you know I, I lived with Michael for over in the Netherlands for two years, um, yeah and we're, we're we're really good mates and 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 that definitely made settling in a lot easier, um, but also there was there was a few Aussie boys over there at the time as well and and yeah we got along really well so that yeah that also made the process easier and also look my my partner um, came over straight away she was over there for two years and and yeah we. We really enjoyed it over there. It was, uh, yeah, the, the Netherlands is a cool country, and um, you know maybe potentially in the future I'd lo I'd love to go back. So um, yeah. Geez, James, I'll tell you what, mate, you are game living with a goalkeeper for as long as you did because they're crazy. You now the goalkeepers' union, it's a strange old bunch. Oh, it's a, it's it is definitely a strange old bunch. Um, yeah, we've got a few strange ones here here as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, yeah, he's a funny guy. Um, I've, I've got a lot of time for Michael. Um, yeah, and, and actually he's doing really well at the moment, which I like to see. He's obviously down in the second division plane. So, um, yeah, look, nah, it was it was two years of, of my life that, yeah, it was it was fun. It was good. I've never been to the Netherlands, but, you know, friends who have been there, they always rave about the, the cafes with brownies and the red light district. I, I hope you... Uh, did you steer clear of that, James? I mean, I don't want to lead you down a dark path. Oh, I, th I think you are leading me down one now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, nah. Look, I think it's just one of the one of the things you have to accept going over there. Um, yeah, cafes on every corner. Um, yeah, didn't didn't see the red light district. Um, yeah, went to Amsterdam a few times, but I, I I made sure I stayed clear of of that zone. Good man, good man. Now listen, in your second life as a Wellington Phoenix player, uh, you, you're actually taking over from your All Whites teammate Liberato Kakachi. Uh, what, what can Wellington Phoenix fans expect from you uh, in replacing the Harry Kuehl medal winner? Uh, are you going to be the same? Are you going to be different? What are you going to bring to the side? Yeah, look, I think in terms of in terms of playing, look, I think you know we obviously have the same same tactics, same philosophy of play. So it's it's all about attacking up the up the wings and and you know being a really aggressive aggressive fullback. So I think in terms of that, yeah, I want to be doing the same thing. I want to be getting assists. I want to be getting goals. Um, but also, obviously, I want to be strong defensively. Um, so, in terms of that, yeah, I think we, yeah, I'm hoping to be similar. But as a player, um, yeah, look, you know, we have different attributes, um, and I'm hoping to exploit mine and 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 yeah, do the the very best I can for my team, and, and I know I can. So, yeah, look, I'm looking forward to the season. Um, yeah, I think we've got two weeks now, so yeah, I think we're we're all just buzzing to get started. Um, and obviously, yeah, big ups to big ups to Libby. He's um, he's doing really well for himself, and he deserves it. Because, yeah, I played with him uh, in the youth at the Phoenix, and and I could see that, yeah, he was he was going to be a good player. And and then, yeah, he got the experience and, and did really well, and, and kind of grabbed it with both hands. And, and look where he is now. So it just shows, I think, all the all the young players, young Kiwis back home, that that's nowadays it's 100 percent possible to, to to you know make it in football, make it in Europe, go to Europe and play. Um, so I think he's doing, yeah, he's doing big things for the game. Have you managed to catch up with him since he uh, arrived in Belgium? Yeah, I've, oh, I've had a few messages with him. Um, he messaged me obviously when I signed and said um, congratulations, which was which was cool. Um, and I said, yeah, just said back to him, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Um, yeah, I always love to see Kiwis doing doing well in Europe, and 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 that's what he's doing. Obviously, look, he's he's in a team now that's struggling a little bit, but his, I think his performances have been have been, have been good. So yeah, he's doing he's doing everything he can. You mentioned earlier the role of the, the wing back or the full back. It's kind of changed over the years to the point where you've got to focus on defence just as much as you focus on attack. Uh, what, what aspect of the wing back role do you enjoy the most? Is it the attack side of things or do you love just ripping into a, a, a horrendous tackle on a, a pretty boy striker every now and then? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a bit of both, to be honest. Um, you know, when I go out there and... And step over the white line, and I see a right winger standing there looking at me. I'm all I'm thinking is I'm wanting to, to beat him one on one, one on one, defensively and attacking. He's not going to get past me, um, and if he if he wants to get past me, I'll I'll take him down. Um, 
and also, yeah, I, I think the game is definitely coming to a point where it's, yeah, fullbacks aren't just defenders. They're not just out and out defenders, not getting forward at all. Uh, especially in the way we play, it's it's all about getting forward both sides, um, whipping in crosses. Obviously, because you know we've got we've got Bully, we've got um, the new striker that's come in, so they're going to be wanting good quality deliveries from from out wide on both sides. So it's really important that we yeah we get up the wings and put those good crosses in. If there's a chance to score a goal, score a goal, um, and and but also get back. You know, I think I think it's a it's a role that you know you've got to be pretty fit to play. Um, so I think that's what we we've, we've been working on. Um, you know, this preseason, getting getting fit, being able to do the Ks, do do the high speed. Um, but then at the end of the day, you're a left back, so you need to be yeah, you need to be able to defend and and stay in the structure of of, of what you're doing. So yeah, it's an, it's a position that that it definitely excites me. Um, there's definitely definitely lots of opportunity um, out wide. Gone are the days of um, not venturing past the, the halfway line. That's what I was told. When I was a defender playing in my, my rubbish team all those years ago. Like, don't you dare step over the halfway line. You're a defender. You stay back. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm thankful I'm playing in, in this day and age then, because yeah, I think I would struggle not not stepping over the halfway line. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the, the new guys in camp. Obviously, you're one of them. Uh, you mentioned the, the new marksman up front, Toma Hamed. Uh, how, how, how are they all gelling with the squad? How are you gelling with the squad? Look, I, I think we've, we've, yeah, we're gelling in perfectly. Um, obviously, it was probably a little bit easier for me. I, I knew a lot of the, the guys that were here. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was reasonably easy for me to come back, and I played with, with the guys a lot. Um, but even just meeting you know, half the other guys that, that are here, yeah. They, they kind of made it made it very easy. Um, obviously, Hemmed's just just come in in the last couple of days. Obviously, he had to quarantine, um, so he isn't yeah he hasn't trained yet. But yeah, he's he's I can imagine he's buzzing to, to get started. And you know, we'll, we'll do the same to him as, as they did for me. We'll uh, yeah make it very easy for him and 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 yeah make him comfortable. What are your expectations for the Phoenix this season? Obviously, last season they finished third, and then uh, things went awry in the playoff mix. How how do you build on that with the new squad? Yeah, look, it's a. It's, I think it's a lot, a lot of the same. Um, I think it would be yeah, it'd be bad to say that we don't want to win. That that's the end goal, I think, for for, for most teams is is to win. We want to win competitions, and and I think we're at a stage that. Yeah, it's it's 100% possible. Um, it's just down to us performing week in week out, um, and and we can do that 100%. Um, you know, we've been putting in some really good performances in the preseason, um, and, and you know, tactically building building a team that that understands understands you know how how the coach wants us to play. And um, yeah, when it comes down to it, we want to win um, every game. Three points is, is what we need every game, um, and if and if we don't get that, yeah, we're gonna have to to look at what we're doing and. And, and go from there, but yeah, same as last year. We want to push. We want to get to the playoffs, and then and then push on from there. That's yeah, that's our that's our goal. You've been around the world and back again. Seen a number of different coaches and managers. Where does Ufuk Tale rate in terms of his managerial success and style? Oh, I think it, it yeah, a lot of it say, says it for itself. Last year, you know, first um, first season in, third place. Um, I, I don't think you need to say too much more than that. Um, you know he looks after us. You know he looks after us, um, works us hard. We've been working really hard this preseason. Um, you know I think tactically really good. Um, you know making sure every player knows his role, knows what he needs to do, and then at the end of the day just work, working hard. I think that for most teams, you know I think if you're lacking in, in that aspect of it, you're going to struggle. Even if you've got the quality, um, you need 11 players out there on the field that are that are going to you know pretty much die for each other. You know, run for each other, do everything, everything in their power to, to win, and and that's what he gets all of us doing. So yeah, no, very very good. Have you taken the opportunity to cast your eye across the rest of the competition and who might be some of the contenders and, and who might fall by the wayside? Um, to a certain extent, you know, obviously you look at the, the top end teams from from last season, but you know, from. from Personally, for myself, not not really. Um, I think we really just need to focus on on what we're doing as a team. Um, and if, and I think if, if we go out there and, and do what we do best, then I think the results will come, and we don't really need to worry. Yeah, about who it's against. You know, you, you're going to face tough teams and, and teams that maybe are struggling. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to us going out on the on the paddock and and doing everything in our power to to win to win the game and get the three points. 
How long do you think you're going to be over there in Australia? Because every day, here in New Zealand at least, we hear talk of a trans-Tasman travel bubble. It's going to be early in the new year. It's going to be in March. What, what are they saying across your side of the ditch in Australia? Yeah, look, we pretty much hear, hear the, same, the same sort of stuff about it potentially opening up next year. Uh, April, I've heard, things like that. Um, but to be honest, yeah, it is what it is. We're not, we're not really focused on the fact that it's 100% going to open. We're just kind of, yeah, we're living over here and, we're, we, you know, we're enjoying our time over here as, as well. It's, it's not ideal, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going well. Um, and and if, if that bubble ends up opening up, then, then yeah, that would be perfect. You know, obviously, we as players want to, want to be playing in front of our own fans. You know, that's, that's you know, half, more than half the club um, is, is the fan base. Um, and they're obviously buzzing, buzzing to see us. So if, if we can at some point next year be be playing at the Caketon and in front of our supporters, that would be that would be perfect. And and we're all we're all, we've all got our fingers crossed for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, at this stage, we're we're looking at, at the early games and, and and just focusing on them. Absolutely. Hey, just lastly, James, before I let you go, I noticed in setting up this chat, you were, you were charging around from the gymnasium into the cafeteria. I saw a, a magnificent-looking sleeve on, is it your left arm? D do you mind telling us a little bit about the ink, the artwork that you're, 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 you're adorned with? Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, I got my, I got my, first, I got my first one, um, actually, at the Phoenix. I think I was probably 18. Um, and, yeah, it's kind of just... It's just things I've picked up over over my time in, in Europe. Um, some of it has, has meaning to myself, some of it not, but that's just, yeah, just what I like. Um, but yeah, obviously, I'm hoping to get some more at some point, um, probably probably in the off-season, um, yeah, next year, and maybe, maybe finish it off if I have time. Oh, so what, what's finished in, in your terms? Like, where do, you, where do you finish? Well, that's, yeah, good question. Um, I could finish my arm and then, yeah, like, I'm... It's just something I'm, yeah, it's something I'm interested in and, and, you know, obviously for some people, you know, they don't like it, but yeah, for me I do. So eventually I want to, yeah, maybe get both arms done, maybe a little bit on my, on my back as well. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not one to, to rush things like that. So yeah, all, all in, yeah, all in time, all in good time. Excellent, mate. I think it looks sharp. I've got a sleeve myself, so you've got a supporter in me, James McGarry. Yeah, Thank thanks you. so much for your time on the Kiwi Football Fix. Hope you go really well when the season gets underway in just under two weeks' time. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Good talking to you. Awesome to have a chat with James McGarry out of the Wellington Phoenix, but let's park the men's game and get into the women's. I'm joined now by Gemma Lewis. You're the head coach of the women's under-20s. Great to have you here on the Kiwi Football Fix. Thanks for your company. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You seem like almost the perfect person to talk to about this weekend's ISPS Women's Premiership Final. Sorry, it's the ISPS Honda Women's Premiership Final. Need to get the official title right. We've got Canterbury United Pride going up against Capital Football. What's going to happen in this one, Gemma? Uh, it's a hard one to call, really, isn't it? I mean, uh, probably not the final that we expected uh, initially. Um, and Canterbury obviously looking to do a three-peat and, and kind of defend their title again. They've been uh, unstoppable in the National Women's League. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, I think. Don't count Capital out because uh, everyone loves an underdog and they've got yeah, nothing to we lose. Do. We love an underdog. Talk about Canterbury's success for a minute. They're looking for their third straight title. They've been in the final seven years running. What's the secret? Um, I think you have to look at the investment that they put into their women's game there. Um, you know, from, from kind of the last few years especially, they have the Pride Development Program. They turned their um, Canterbury Pride women's team into more of a full-time program where they train through the winter. And you can kind of tell that it's a really established team where they put a lot of investment into it. And when they play together, you can see that they're so used to each other, they're so used to the style of play, um, and it comes off in success. Do you think they... Maybe one of their downfalls this weekend could be complacency. They've been so successful for so long. They come up against a team that, well, by right, shouldn't really be there, maybe. Maybe they've checked out. Do you think that complacency could be their enemy? Um, it is something they're going to have to be mindful of. Um, I know that you know the players there probably will be trying not to be in that mindset, um, but it's quite hard when there's a big expectation on you, home final, you're probably going to be expected to have a good result, um, and all the pressure is going to be on you. It could be quite easy to kind of, I guess, feel like you've already got it in the bag a little bit. As for Capital Football, um, they could be guilty for having checked out just a little bit towards the end of the season because. When all of the stuff and nonsense around Auckland Football Federation came out, they weren't even playing that weekend. So they'd played their final round game, they were done for the season. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, they've done enough 
to get into a grand final. So what's it going to take to sort of switch their mindset? Yeah, that mentality, that shift would be massive. But you have to look at it as, as a positive. Like if you're that player and you think your season's done and then all of a sudden you hear that you've got a final to play, like surely you're getting up for that. Mm. Auckland Football Federation, we've sort of skirted the issue. What was the issue? Because obviously we hear that they've fielded somebody who was ineligible. But what does it actually mean? Was it somebody who was just too good for the league? You know, who, who was this person and why were they ineligible? Um, I think it was down to somebody of the same name being registered um, but wasn't the correct player and didn't have an international transfer is, is uh. what, I, what I believe. Um, but obviously, you know, these things happen. It's something in the game um, that is unfortunate and I, I'm really gutted for the players and, and the staff involved because um, arguably, um, you know, one of the best teams in this league, if not the best team in the league this season. So it, it is one of those things that is hard to swallow and I feel for the team. The women's game is just continuing to grow and grow in New Zealand, which is awesome to see. You're at the forefront for the Football Ferns domestic program. Why are we seeing the, the success that we are, women being picked up by the W League in Australia and also going further afield? Um, I think the program in itself was was created to kind of bridge the gap between um, our domestic league and, and the world stage. Um, there's so much investment going into the women's game um, globally now and you can see the professional games getting stronger and stronger um, throughout like different countries in the world. Um, so I guess what we do in terms of training in a centralised environment, we play against boys um, so that it kind of makes that challenge point harder and harder for us. So hopefully we're kind of bridging that gap um, between showing what we can do on a world stage. And the players that we've sent across that have been successful um, just kind of builds our reputation. So now we end up kind of getting more people wanting players coming out of our environment, um, which gives us a really good feed to have more professionals playing in the game. Gemma, I need you to help me out here because we've had another three women snapped up by a W League franchise, a club, Perth Glory. Can you please do the honours? Can you introduce our next three guests for us? I suppose I can. Um, so introducing uh, Lily Alfield, Lizzie Anton and Malia Steinmetz. Great to have your company on the Kiwi Football Fix, guys. And, and congratulations on securing your, your first overseas contract with the Perth Glory. H how does it feel? Let's go down the line left to right. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's been a crazy last seven days, really, um, finding out where we've secured a contract and, and moving over here. Um, but it's been great. Yeah, um, I'm really excited. It did happen really fast. Um, but now we're here and we're ready to get out of um, isolation and ready to go. <laughs> yeah, like it, um, it's been good. It still doesn't feel too real just yet. So I think once we finally get our first training out of the way, we'll probably sit a little bit more. Liz, was a, uh, a contract in the W League, was it even on your radar at any point this year? Um, not really. Um, to be honest, I just got called by Gemma... Um, I don't know, like a couple of weeks ago, I was saying that there's potential for it. And then Tom um, called me uh, just to sort of go over what, like, it could happen. Um, and then Alex contacted me about a week later. Um, yeah, now I'm here, I guess. <laughs> Pretty outrageous. And so whereabouts do you find yourselves, guys? Uh, you're in Perth, but you're in a form of quarantine. Is that right, Lily? Yep, yep. So we're all quarantining together um, in the flat that we're going to be living in. So that's kind of great, not having to stay in a hotel. Um, we've got a bit of a backyard here, so we're able to, to train and um, still try to keep fit and get ready for the season. Um, but it's been great. It's just the three of us here too. So, yeah, we're all friendly still at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how well do you guys know each other? Obviously, a couple of you play together for Auckland Football Federation. So... You'd be pretty uh, au fait with each other's foibles? Yeah, I think we've all known each other for quite a long time. Um, so, yeah, I think we gel really well and there's not too many issues so far. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I think far. we'll also be comfortable enough to <laughs> tell each other if there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jim has just said, yeah, not, not too many issues so yeah, far. So have you far. seen these girls have a few issues in the past, have you? Oh, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll find annoying habits out soon enough. <laughs> Are you surprised that these three were snapped up by Perth Glory? 
Ah, uh, no, n not at all, to be honest. Um, I think we were, um, when we heard Perth Glory kind of were coming into the fold and, and, and were looking for players, um, you know, we were trying to push these girls uh, straight away because we knew they had the calibre to be in that league. So um, now it's just a good opportunity for them to go out and show that this is where they're supposed to be. Mm. How closely do you guys watch the W League? Uh, like last year, definitely more so thing as I like played in Sydney a little bit. So I... Um, like knew some of the girls, so it was always something that we wanted to watch. And we watched some live, actually, um, this, at the beginning of this year. So it was good. It was good to see. Mm. I was talking to Gemma earlier. You may have heard uh, about the growth of the women's game in New Zealand. And you guys are at the forefront of it. Uh, can you tell us uh, about what you experience week to week uh, in these Football Ferns development programs? <laughs> Yeah, I think they're, they're fantastic. We've got, I mean, just from when, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, um, when we were still in the youth yeah, to now, it's just a massive jump in, in the support we get, the, um, the training program we're in, we're training you know, four, five, six times a week. Um, we have gym, we have nutrition support, we have um, all sorts of support that we wouldn't have had. So it's, it's a really exciting time for us to be involved. Um, in women's football and I think especially with the, the Women's World Cup coming up soon it's only going to get better. Yeah I was going to ask about that and picking up a contract with Perth at a time like this a few years out from a Women's World Cup in New Zealand geez that, that can only but help your chances for selection. Yeah I think it's going to be a, a good challenge for us and a good um, sort of gauge to see where we're at um, and hopefully we all do a good job and that um, puts us in a good place for the future for future selections. Be honest, when, when it came out, the news that uh, we were going to be hosting in 2023, did you just sort of, you know, take a moment to go, all right, that's a, a nice little target that I can set for myself? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And just the fact that it's like a home thing. So like you'd have your family and friends around or something. Definitely something to look forward to and try for. Yeah, and when I think back to 2008 when we had the age group tournament here, the success that that was, and now we're talking about the full-fledged FIFA Women's World Cup, it's got to be something to aspire to, doesn't it? I can still remember when that World Cup came to New Zealand. That was, yeah. the, that was the moment where I'm like, right, this is what I want to do. This is, yeah, I want to be a professional football. I want to play for New Zealand. So just to know that... That, that is going to have that kind of impact on the next generation of footballers. It's so exciting for this country, I think. Mm. Just quickly, why, why do you think that um, New Zealand women are, are so popular in Australia? I think you guys are numbers mm. five, six and seven to be snapped up by Australian teams. Mm. Just so easy going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever it is, keep it up and uh, go well <laughs> over there, guys. You know, uh, I, I look forward to seeing you on the paddock and uh, congratulations. Gemma, have you got any last words before we, we cut them adrift? Uh, no, nah, they know they know. I'm going to be looking out for them. I'm watching the games and I'm sure I'll be touching base soon. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for joining us on the Kiwi Football Fix. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you. That must warm your heart a little bit, Gemma. Oh. You know, like the, the young girls, they're, they're, they've flown the coop almost. Yeah, definitely. It is. Uh, you <laughs> Left see, home. Yeah, you see that and it kind of, uh, kind of makes your job a little bit worthwhile, you know, especially somebody like Liz as well, who's been in our program for like three years now, you know, and she's gone through university in Auckland and um, this season, like she's had a stellar season mm. and she's just come into her own and then for her to pick up her first contract is, is pretty incredible. So for all three of them, but it, it definitely, uh, yeah, warms the heart. Just on that 2023 World Cup, how do you think we're shaping up? You see these girls, you know, week in, week out, and when you when you put into the mix some of our more senior, established football ferns as well, are we going to have a really strong team at this World Cup? Yeah, I think I'm really excited about it. There's the potential to have a good mix, um, you know, of this young talent coming through, and then obviously our established ferns that have been pros um, for years, you know. So I think that combination could provide something really exciting for, for the country to really get behind. Mm. Um, you know, the rest of the countries are also uh, are doing really well and kind of the whole game's progressing. So I'm just really excited to see um, all of those countries on this world stage. Mm. Almost time to let you go. I can't let you disappear without a prediction for the ISP. Honda Women's Premiership final. Who have you got? Is it 
the strong favourite, Canterbury United Pride, or is it the underdog, Capital Football? Oh, it's a hard one. I do love an underdog. Um, I do love <laughs> do an underdog. do you love this underdog? <laughs> I do love an underdog, um, but I just think Canterbury are too good. You know, so I, I'm, I'm betting Canterbury for the final. Gemma Lewis, thanks for your opinions and your predictions and your appearance on the Kiwi Football Fix. Really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And I think that's it. That's it. We're, we're done for the year. But we will be back in the new year. Yes, I'll return and we'll have guests and we'll have football chat and we'll focus on all things New Zealand football. So until then, have a great Christmas and New Year and we'll see you next time.